PC Wiz Kid here with the Sapphire Vapor X AMD R9-280X graphics card. Now this one here is a high-end graphics card, okay? Three gigs of GDDR5 memory. You can run Ifinity, no problem, without the display port. Comes already pre-overclocked out of the factory. And of course, this is a 384-bit graphics card. So again, high-end, keep that in mind. And uh, you can have several of these in Crossfire. The uh, reference design says that it has a one six pin um, power connector, one eight pin. This one here has two eight pin because it comes pre-overclocked. It does require more power. I do recommend that you have a 750 watt power supply, especially if you're gonna have several of these in Crossfire. Look at the width, look at the size, and of course the cooling. This one here requires lots of cooling and so the VaporX Edition comes with that. Four copper heat sink, um, nickel plated heat pipes going through that heat sink in there and underneath that you've got the vapor x plate that chamber okay it's basically um, a vacuum chamber that uh, recycles the uh, the coolant basically keeps it cool and also in there on the top nice aggressive look the logo lights up I'll show you that in a moment and um, these are basically you know interesting design uh, very nice and uh, along the top here, you'll see that there's a little button there. That's the uh, UEFI Windows 8 dual bias uh, enabling uh, button. And uh, again, there are the two 8-pin uh, PCI Express connectors. Make sure your power supply has that. And uh, what else can I tell you? Well, it has a nice uh, reinforced back plate. That's very nice. It's not just there for looks. It's also there to give it support and some additional cooling, believe it or not. It looks very, very nice. I do like that they put that, and so it should. In a high-end graphics card, we always uh, want to see things like this. Now, going to the outputs, nothing out of the ordinary there. you got two display port outs. Uh, sorry, two DVI out, one display port out, and one HDMI out, okay? And um, what else do we have here? There's the heat sink uh, going through the entire card with the uh, heat pipes going through it. And that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and put this in my uh, machine here, the test system, which we're going to review the entire system separately. Today, we're only reviewing the graphics card. Like I said earlier, nice LED logo lit up there. We're running Windows 8 on this machine. Yes, I do have a 1000 watt power supply in here. We're using a gigabyte board, the 990FX AUD3 board. And what CPU do we have to power this beast? Well, we have the AMD FX 9590. That's right, you heard it, 9590. That is a beast. We're going to review this CPU separately, so don't worry, guys and girls. Look at this machine. It's got Corsair Vengeance, 16 gigs of memory, SSD drive, super fast machine i'm telling you we're going to be able to get some nice results because there's no lag everything is working in harmony together and um, i even overclocked the uh, default clocks that uh, the uh, gpu came with even further so we're going to do a comparison here on this 384 bit high-end graphics card and overclock it even further now on idle this graphics card runs at 33 degrees Celsius, and on full load, it goes up to 63 degrees Celsius. Even if I overclocked it, it still stayed around 63 degrees Celsius. So great work there for that VaporX and heatsink technology that we're using. Now, again, here are the overclocked settings that uh, I finally got stable and running on everything. And uh, again, the temperatures didn't really go any higher than 63 degrees Celsius. There's the fan speed. And um, going next to the benchmarks, we're going to start looking at some uh, synthetic benchmarks with 3D Mark Vantage. And we're looking at 30,013 for the GPU score. We're really comparing the GPU score only to other GPU scores uh, on other graphics cards. So here they are. And again, as you can see here, I reviewed not too long ago the Sapphire Toxic, the R9-270X, which is also a great card. If you haven't seen that, I'll add the link below. Here are the 3D Mark 11 benchmarks, the performance benchmarks, P9577. And again, we're comparing these benchmarks to other graphics cards to get an idea on where this stands. So here's a chart again with those scores. So you can see how this compares, how much more performance we're really getting. And also, again, on Firestrike, if you're wondering about 3D Mark, here are the scores for that on performance and on the extreme settings. Now Cinebench 
very interesting on Cinebench we see here how well it performed in the um, frames per second rendering compared to the 7950 that I had originally in here as well when we overclock both they are really head to head head to head on those um, really close results so not sure there what to tell you but uh, this card really is powerful on the Haven Benchmark 4.0, you can see here the minimum, max, and average frames per second. Again, running it on ultra, full-blown, all settings there, and overclocked. We get a little bit more performance on the score on the frames per second as well, again, on the same settings. Now, let's look at some games. Going into some games here, starting with Battlefield 4, ultra settings at 1080p, of course. We're running here single-player campaign. Gives you a good idea on the default clocks and overclocked even further when I did that. Frames per second are tremendous, very smooth. Battlefield 3, no questions. You know, this is really a fast graphics card, so you're going to be able to play online and not have any lag there as well. Tomb Raider, again, running it on regular, running it pre-overclocked, overclocked. You're not really going to see too much of a difference, about 10% increase in performance. Crisis 3, not too much uh, performance increase as well. But on um, uh, the Sleeping Dogs, I did see a little bit of performance increase, again, on the uh, overclocked version. And on Alien vs. Predator, here are, again, the benchmarks. You know, different games give you different results. It all depends. But overall, um, you might not even have to overclock it. Out of the box, it's giving great performance. For the price, around $300.00. You know, a GTX 770 sure is faster, but it costs maybe anywhere from $50 to $100 more. So you decide. There's different cards. Prices are dropping. And this one is priced right in the middle there, almost like a sweet spot. So it's very hard to say right now, you know, coming towards the end of the year, prices are going to drop further and further. And this is really giving the best performance right now that I can see. So uh, comment below. Let me know what you think. Um, I'll add the links to the other graphics cards that I reviewed that are benchmarked as well if you're interested. I'd like to thank CyberPower for providing it. Hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.